In this video, I'd like to talk about five minor changes that you can make to your finances that can have a big impact on how you can grow your money in 2024 and beyond. Happy New Year and welcome back. This is episode 184. I hope that your 2024 is off to a great start. And in this episode, I want to talk about five resolutions that you can make in 2024 that will improve your finances and your life. If one of your resolutions is about getting a plan in place for retirement, then consider signing up for my online self-paced retirement planning course. It is over seven hours of video lessons with yours truly and helpful checklists to implement what you've learned. I'm still offering a discount. You can take advantage of a 25% discount on the course if you sign up by February 1st. Just use the code retire25. Head over to retirewithryan.com forward slash on demand to learn more. And if you head over to the show notes for this episode or click the notes below, you'll be able to see that. So one of the traditions for New Year's is to set out um, or set New Year's resolutions. And I've done this in the past, probably like many of you, I've had the New Year's resolution of losing weight, spending less money, uh, lowering my golf score. And those are definitely great resolutions, but what I found is that they're just a little too vague. If you don't set a plan for how you're going to lose weight, for example, like joining a gym, scheduling when you're actually going to make it to the gym, um, signing up for certain classes at the gym, and then getting some type of um, diet plan to improve your eating, you're most likely to fail. You might eat better for a few weeks, um, but then you're probably going to move on to something else. So it's important that Anytime we're setting a resolution or a goal, we get a mini plan in place for each goal and work backwards on how you're going to achieve that goal. So in that vein, I wanna give you five New Year's resolutions you should consider making this year and then how you can actually implement them. And you don't have to do all of these at once, but you can tackle them one at a time, like spacing them out every two to three weeks. And once you get the first one done, then you can check that off and move on to the second. So the first um, resolution you should set is get a high yield savings account. And I've talked about this a lot this year because it's really been worth it for quite some time now to move your money from your bank that's most likely paying you little to no interest to another savings account or money market fund that can pay you between four and 5% interest per year. If you have an extra $10,000 sitting in your bank account as an emergency fund and you moved it to one of these other accounts, that's an extra four to $500 per year of interest. And this will take you less than 30 minutes of your time to get this done. And if you have even more money than that just sitting in your bank account, then it's worth it even more to you. So how do you do this? Well, first you have to decide whether you wanna go with a high yield savings account or a money market. And I'm all about making your life easier. If you already have investment accounts with one of the three big discount brokerage firms that I mentioned often, often and that is Charles Schwab, who, my, who I use and my company uses, Fidelity or Vanguard, then it's probably easier to use one of their money market funds. Like for example, if your 401k is already with Fidelity, it's probably easier just to set up another account with Fidelity so you have your money in one place and there's one sign on. Their interest rates vary slightly between the three, but they're all in the same ballpark of that four to five percent. So once you've decided which firm you want to use, then you want to open what's known as a taxable brokerage account with them if you don't already have one opened. And if you're married, just to make your life easier down the road, you might want to set it up as a joint tenant with rights of survivorship account. And most of these companies allow you to do this online, head over to their website, click on open an account, click on open a brokerage account, and it should take you less than 10 minutes to do that. Now, once the account is opened, you'll then wanna link your bank account to it so you can then move the money from your bank account over into the account to now be able to earn more interest. And then you'll initiate the transfer and you do this from the new brokerage account, uh, moving it from your bank into your investment account. And this, uh, with Fidelity and Vanguard, um, should go right into their default money market. And by the way, this takes about two to three days usually for the money to move over. So I would check back about a week later to make sure that the money's been moved over and that it's also been moved into the money market fund and is not sitting in cash. And once you see the money market fund that you've been invested in, 
you just want to make sure that you're in a fund that's yielding between four and five percent interest and you can look that up um, by clicking on the fund potentially or, or using google and um, if you want to make a change in the money market fund if you want to then investigate other money market funds that are available with that provider you could then do that at that time too now if you're using schwab there is one extra step that i've talked about that you'll need to do so with schwab their default money market doesn't pay as much interest as their other money markets do. Their default money market pays less than half a percent of interest. So you'll need to make a money market purchase into one of their other higher yielding funds. It's just one extra step. And one of the highest yielding funds is Schwab's Value Advantage Fund, the symbol is SWVXX. And its seven day yield as of uh, January 5th, 2024 is 5.27% and it carries a 0.34% expense ratio. That is the money market fund that I use for the majority of my money and for my clients' money. So you'll need to make that purchase, and then when you're moving money out of that fund back over to your bank, you'd also need to sell that fund and wait a couple business days for that money to be available. So that is one extra step, whereas if you use uh, Fidelity or Vanguard, they don't have that extra step, um, but it shouldn't stop you from, from using Schwab if that's gonna make your life easier. So I should say, if you don't want a brokerage account, um, there are another of, a number of other options available to you. One is you could go to bankrate.com. That's a website where you can then see what other high yield savings accounts are available. So you would then click on high yield savings accounts and you'd see the offerings that are available. These change daily. And I just looked at this one recording this video. There was a dozen or so available ranging from four to 5% and you want to investigate that. But you use the same steps as before. Open the new account, tran uh, connect your bank account, then transfer the money over. Probably two to three business days later, it's there. And that shouldn't have any extra steps because that is just a savings account. The other benefit I should mention of the brokerage account is that if you want to do other investing, you can do that all in one account, and that could make your life easier as well. So that's resolution number one. Resolution number two invest the money in your hsa account now this is another easy thing to do however i'm finding for meeting with clients and prospective clients a lot of people are still sitting on good amount of money in their health savings accounts and unfortunately health savings account is just as bad as your bank many of them pay you little to no interest so the first thing i would do is wherever your health savings account is located is investigate if they offer a money market fund that can also pay you between four to five percent interest because we know we could get that elsewhere if they um, don't have that that could be a reason to consider moving your money and you'd also want to investigate if they offer any index based funds like an s p 500 so that if you want to invest some of the money that's available to you so if they don't offer these or they have high cost funds consider opening up an account somewhere else I've mentioned before that I have my HSA with Fidelity. They have one of the best HSAs out there. They don't have an annual fee. They have a high yielding money market. You can buy many funds with little to no cost. So if you want to do that, you'd head over to Fidelity, um, click on open an HSA account. This should also take you less than 10 minutes. Once it's opened, you'd follow the steps to transfer your existing HSA. They can help you to transfer your existing HSA over to Fidelity. And once that's over there, then you'd also want to make sure that it goes into money market or invest some of the money. So while you're thinking of this, it's also a good idea to see if you've contributed the maximum amount to your HSA for 2023. You still have until the April 15th tax filing deadline to do this. Remember, that amount is between the amount you contribute and what your employer contributes. So if you're single, that amount for 2023 is uh, $3,850. If you're considered a family plan, that amount is $7,750. So what's a family? Well, that's two people covered under the HSA. So if you're married and your spouse is on your health plan or you have a child who's a dependent, that qualifies you as a family plan. Now, there's one other thing to know with this is that if you or your spouse are over 55, there's an, another $1,000 catch-up contribution that you can make. So to do that, you'd need to have an HSA in your name. And if your spouse is also over 55, they'd need to have, have an HSA in their name. But again, it's not hard to do. Open up an account with Fidelity or so, another provider, and you would then connect your bank account, just like with any other investment account, and you could transfer the money right into your HSA. 
therefore allowing you to make the maximum contribution. And if you've got more money in your HSA than you think you're going to use in the near future, consider investing some of that for longer term growth, putting it in different stock funds or stocks or stock index funds, whatever your preference is. So that would be your resolution number two. Um, number three is get some of your money over to a Roth account. Um, we have a current tax plan that is going to sunset in 2026. It's hard to tell what will happen. You know, 2024 this year, we have an election coming up. We don't know who's going to get elected and what that might do to the tax code. So if tax rates go higher, this might be a good time to get some money over to a Roth to take advantage of that tax-free growth that it offers. So there's three options to do this. The first being a Roth IRA. You can put in $6,500 in 2023. If you're under 50, $7,500 if you're over 50. And just like the HSA, you have until April 15th to make your contribution for 2023. And to do that, however, your adjusted gross income has to be under a certain limit. And for 2023, that's 138,000 for a single filer and 218,000 for a couple um, married filing jointly. Now, if your, your income was over that limit, then consider maybe a Roth 401k. If you're self-employed or you work for an employer that offers a Roth 401k, then you can contribute to that no matter what your adjusted gross income is. And the 401k limits as a reminder for 2024 are 23,000 if you're under 50 and um, it'd be 30,500 if you're over 50. The third option is consider, as far as getting money over to the Roth side, consider doing a Roth conversion. So that is where you pay tax at your current tax rates on the amount of money that you convert, and then that money would move tax-free over to the Roth. So the benefit of this is that if you think tax rates are going to be higher in the future, it could be nice to pay tax at a lower rate now and have all the growth on that money over however many years you can leave it in there. And you'd want to know um, what tax bracket you're in this year. I would say if you're in a 22% bracket or lower and you anticipate being in a higher bracket in the future, then it could make sense to do this conversion. And it will also help because if you're passing on this account to your children, they would then receive it tax-free as well. So if you're considering this Roth conversion, I would suggest you talk to your financial advisor and or your CPA to take a look at your taxes and figure out how much you might want to convert. So again, if one of these makes sense, you'd want to figure out which strategy made the most sense. If it's a Roth IRA, get the Roth IRA opened, start funding it. If it's the Roth 401k, make sure that you change the election with your 401k provider so that money is going into that. And if it's the Roth conversion, then schedule an appointment with your accountant or your financial advisor to investigate this further. Resolution number four, uh, get a better idea of where your money's going. A lot of us spend money uh, on an annual basis. We kind of have a clue where the money's going, but we're not really sure. And now that the last year is over, it's a good idea to take a look and see where your money went. And I personally do this every year. I can tell you, my wife hates it, right? <laughs> I take a look at all our spending and I, I you know, co collectively we see where the money was spent um, you know, could we do anything different to maybe save a little bit more money uh, and set, set some money in, aside? One of the negatives for my wife of being married to a financial advisor. So what you'd want to do is download all your credit card transactions and bank transactions so you could get them in a file that you could categorize them, whether you use Excel, Google Sheets, and categorize them to get an idea of where your money was spent. So you can have an idea of what your budget's going to look like for 2024, and then also any potential changes or improvements that you could make. You can also consider using a budget tracking app. There's lots of them out there. Some of the more popular ones are like QuickBooks, Monarch, you need a budget. It can just make your life easier so that on a monthly basis, you can then check back in with that budgeting app and see how you're doing versus your targeted spending that you've set for the year. So make a plan to download those, those transactions and then look at where your budget is and see if there's any tweaking that you need to do for 2024 and beyond. And the last resolution would be consider giving some money to charity. Many of us are very fortunate. Uh, you know, we have a roof over our head. We have food on, on the table. We have some extra spending money in our pocket. But there are a lot of people out there who are not as fortunate as us and donating a little bit of money can make a major difference for them and for their family. 
So you can donate cash or other household items, but one of the tricky things is that it's hard to take tax deductions on these small donations. So another option is you can use what is known as a donor advised fund. It allows you to donate a larger amount of money at once that you can take uh, as one tax deduction in the same year. But then within this fund, you can invest the money and also choose how you give out the money. So you could give it out slowly over time, but you could take the donation um, or make the donation all in one tax year, therefore allowing you a tax deduction for this donation. Also, if you've reached required minimum distribution age, which is now 73, you can donate part of your required minimum distribution to charity. The benefit of that is you've satisfied your required minimum distribution, but you're not taxed on the amount of money that you donate over to a charity. You would, however, need to do this um, through your IRA custodian. So if Charles Schwab holds your IRA, there's a form you'd have to fill out with Charles Schwab. So they send the money directly over to the charity. You can't take the money out and then make this decision. So now is a good time to be looking at this as we're, we have, you know, RMDs potentially required for you in 2024. You can get this set up and get the paperwork on file so that you can take care of this. And then you also could do this as well with inherited IRAs. If you inherited an IRA from your um, from your parent or from a friend or sibling and you have to take a certain amount out of that every year you could also donate that as well and, and therefore satisfy the rmd so i know this is only five uh resolutions but it can seem like a lot again you don't have to do all of these you could do all of these and that would be wonderful and if you're going to do that again just start with one get that one done uh, you know, give yourself a couple weeks, move on to the next, and this could really help improve your financial life for this year and beyond. Or if you're just going to do a few of them, that's fine too. The key with any of this is the implementation, right? We all make plans, but we fail to follow through on them, like some of the, you know, foolish resolutions maybe you've made in the past. And the key here is make sure you make a plan and you schedule time to get this done and you can get these things knocked off and improve your financial life. So I wish everyone a healthy and prosperous 2024. And as always, I appreciate you listening. If you have a listener question you'd like to have considered for a future episode, head over to retirewithryan.com and click on ask a question and we'll consider that question for the future. Have a wonderful week and I look forward to talking with you next Wednesday. Take care.